Welcome to our 10-minute Shalom Learning Center Lectorium. And we are focusing our attention on uh, history of Judaism and Jewish people, which is one of the most important instruments in our understanding of not only the New Testament, but many other important issues. And uh, we began to talk about Ezra, who, as mentioned, was both Kohen, which is the priest, and Sofer, which is the scribe. We are familiar with the term Kohen, the priest, because of uh, the book of Leviticus and the book of Deuteronomy. Particularly, uh, the book of Deuteronomy talks about the priest uh, who are placed in charge of preservation of the book of the law, the Sefer Torah, which Moses completed uh, as it's described in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 31. And so it is clear according to Deuteronomy 17 that Priests are the ones who are uh, responsible for teaching, preserving, and multiplying uh, the book of the law. And we see, for example, uh, in the story of King Jehoshaphat, uh, as described in uh, uh, the first chronicle, how he sent his priests around Judea to teach uh, people the laws of the Torah. Also, the story of uh, the uh, King Josiah, uh, the priest reported to him that he has found the book of the uh, Torah uh, in the temple, and uh, Josiah orders uh, for the priests to teach it. Uh, even such an um, infamous story of the fall of Samaria and how, uh, according to the uh, Second Kings chapter 17, uh, the people from Mesopotamia came uh, and replaced uh, Israelites uh, from the northern tribes uh, who were exiled, uh, as we already discussed. And so when these new people came into the territory of Israel, uh, uh, they didn't know how to uh, handle themselves and they were attacked by wild beasts. And so they sent the request to a uh, king of Assyria to uh, provide them some instruction on uh, how to uh, learn about God of that land. And so what does the king of Assyria do? He finds a priest whom he sends to the land of Samaria, to the land of Israel, who would teach those people who are becoming, they will eventually be called Samaritans, uh, the Torah. And we have what is called Samaritan Pentateuch, which is an interesting uh, version of the Torah, Samaritan version of the Torah. Not so many Samaritans are left. Uh, the community of Samaritans is very small. They live on Mount Gerizim near the Palestinian town of Nablus. And during the Pesach, they still offer uh, the lambs because they believe it, that their temple is on the top of Mount Gerizim. Uh, so, all of this uh, is to uh, establish the case that priests were the, one, were the ones responsible for the preservation of the Torah. And Ezra is exactly doing that. Uh, in fact, it is very possible that Ezra's family, which is listed in his book, were dealing specifically with uh, copying the holy books. And this is why he is called uh, the scribe, Sofer, 
uh, which is also very important because uh, we have uh, scribes uh, in the uh, uh, described in the gospel and uh, people who are ignorant about uh, Jewish history often have uh, a very wrong idea about who scribes are and they think the scribes are legalists and this is not the case. Scribes are the first and foremost uh, are those who uh, were in charge of copying of the books of the scripture and without them we just wouldn't be having any books of the scripture uh, particularly I am referring to Tanakh uh, or known among the Christians as uh, the Old Testament. Uh, so what is Ezra doing? Uh, the book of Nehemiah chapter 8 describes that people gathered around uh, the square near the gate of Jerusalem and they ask Ezra the scribe to read to them from the book of the law. And this is something very, very unique, uh, which uh, we don't have uh, much information about before. Uh, uh, what we are seeing here uh, described to us in the book of Nehemiah is a different type of worship. Uh, the temple itself provided worship only in the context of sacrifice. Uh, whereas uh, what we see in uh, described in the book of Nehemiah chapter 8 is the worship uh, which is in the context of the public reading of the Torah. Ezra is reading the Torah in front of the people, both, and it's interesting, it, uh, it's uh, repeating, uh, both men and women. Uh, why both men and women? Because uh, temple was mainly a man's uh, thing. Uh, especially uh, the issue of sacrifice. Uh, the reason for it is that uh, women have children, and uh, uh, women, uh, women have children, and that's why they're often in a state of uncleanness, and uh, uh, it's very often hard for a woman uh, to uh, come to the temple on a regular basis. Uh, that's why uh, Exodus 23, verse 17, is very specific. Three times a year, all male uh, have to appear before the Lord. And it repeats male. Uh, female do appear, but they don't have to. Uh, when we talk about Ezra and the reading, it's a totally different context. It's at the square around the water gate. Uh, the water gate is the uh, gate entering the temple from the side of the, uh, uh, of the pool of Siloam. Later, uh, there would be a custom where uh, uh, the water from the pool of Siloam would be brought into the temple through that gate uh, to the altar and poured upon the altar on the, uh, during the holiday of uh, Sukkot, uh, known to Christian as the Feast of Tabernacles. But it's definitely not at the temple. And so Ezra reads from the uh, book of the law in front of both men and women, and what is emphasized there, all who can understand. So it's not a state of cleanness or uncleanness which matters, it's the state of mind and ability to understand which matters. And so we do have 
Now, uh, a, a good description of the second type of worship uh, among the two that exist. And we will continue talking about this in our next lecture.